Hello students, so in the previous lecture, we have covered some basic concepts about arrays, okay? That was the first lecture of array. So in this video, we will be solving some 7 to 8 questions, basic questions basically that were related to arrays, that are related to arrays, okay? So what we will be covering in this session, we will be covering, we will be covering arrays practice question, arrays practice questions, right? So this will be the practice question set one. Practice questions set one. Basic questions. Basic to intermediate questions, right? Or basic questions, right? Okay. So what? Uh, so how will uh, how I will be going about this for today is. Firstly, I will be explaining you each and every logic of the question. What, what is the question state? What does the question state? Every logic on the whiteboard. This is the whiteboard, open board. And then we will be moving to this editor. We will be coming to this editor and coding it up, right? So this is the technique that we will be using. Firstly, understand the question here, open board. And then after understanding the question here, we will be coding it up, right? Okay, so let us proceed. Let us proceed. So, the first question, question number one, question number one. The first question for today will be, traverse in, in, in the array, traverse in the array, traverse in the array, and, and print all elements of array, print all elements of array, elements of array, right? So the first question is traversing in the array and printing the elements of the array. This is the this is the first question, right? This is the first question. So let us proceed to the open board to understand this question and then we will be coding it up. So the question states that question states that traverse in the array, traverse in the array and print its elements print and print its elements right print its elements traverse in the array and print its elements right so this is the question this is the question okay so let us take an array suppose i am declaring some array suppose i am giving you i'm not declaring i'm directly giving you some array okay we will be declaring it in the editor suppose i am giving you some array as like this Areas like this, this 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Suppose this is the array. My question is to you like, okay, so we are having some indexes or indices in the plural, plural form. Okay. So this is the elements. This is the five elements. This is the array of size five. This is the array of size five and there are the indices, right? Indices. So I want to ask you like the question, how do you traverse in the array? Firstly, let us cover this part, traverse in the array, okay? Then we will be covering this part, okay? Then we will be covering this part. Firstly, how do you traverse in the array and then how do you print the element? That is the second part. This is the first part of the question. This is the second part of the question. I already told you yesterday, I already told you yesterday the meaning of traversing. I told you, you know, like how, what is the meaning of traversing? It means traveling. In real world, we use the word traveling to go from one, uh, one place to the other. In technical terms, for, for traversing in the data structures, we use the term traversing, traversal, traversal, right? Okay. So, I will be using a for loop here. I already told you, when you have to cover multiple elements, when you have to cover, when you have to cover multiple elements, you have to use a for loop. When you have to deal with multiple elements, when you have to deal with multiple elements, you have to use a for loop. We are studying this from last many days, right? When you have to cover multiple elements, you have to use a for loop. Okay, you have to use a for loop, right? Let me raise it off. So, we, one thing to remember, one thing to remember, we always loop from the index. We always loop from the index. Okay, we always start looping from the index. 
like when i was explaining you about for loops i told you that how to print 1 to 10 elements how to print 1 to 10 elements initialize a variable i this is sorry this is define start using right uh, sorry right for keyword right for keyword open the round parenthesis initialize this i with 1 put a semicolon take it up to the 10 this is i less than equal to this is less than equal to symbol okay in the code we are writing like this here we can write like this okay both things are correct this is also correct this is also correct okay so i less than equal to 10 and i plus plus this is how you printed 1 to 10 elements curly braces then you what you did see out left shift a space so that to pro provide it readability okay this is this is how you coded to print elements 1 to 10 how it get printed how they will get uh, they will be getting printed 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 this is how they will be getting printed Okay, this was the for loop. This was the just I have uh, written it to uh, make, you, make you aware. Okay, this is the for loop that we have used and covered in the previous videos. If you have to loop, if you have to loop in an array or on an array, if you have to loop over an array, how do you do that? Can you tell, have you, uh, like, do you have any idea in your mind, like how to travel? Okay, let me tell you. Let me tell you how to do that. Okay, so firstly, when we have to travel in an arena, we have to start traveling from the index indexes. See, see what all are, what all, uh, what all are the indexes. Indexes are from 0 to 4. Indexes are from 0 to 4. Okay, so indexes are from 0 to 4. Indexes are from 0 to 4. So we will be traveling from 0th index to 4th index. Because we have to access these elements of the array. And how, uh, like uh, yesterday I told you how to access array elements. Array elements can only be accessed using indexes. Array element can only be accessed during indices. If I want to access this 30, how do I access that? ARR of 2. Because the 2 index, at 2 index, at 2 index, 30 is present okay this is how i access this 30 so you have to travel you have to make a for loop by traveling on indices okay indices arrays traverse using indices arrays traverse using indices because with the help of these indices you can easily access the array elements you can easily access the array elements with the help of indices so we have to travel from 0 to 4th index because there are 5 elements. 5 elements it means 0 to 4 indices are there. Index is 1 less than the element block block number, right? Okay. So how, how will I traverse? I will define some i variable for traversing. I will use a for keyword. I will open some round parenthesis. Okay, I will open some round parenthesis. I will start this i from the first index I already told you. You have to start, you have to start the traversal from the zero because st indexes start from zero, right? Indexes uh, are starting from zero. That's why you have to start this from zero. You have to go less than equal to four because the end index is 4 the starting index is this si starting index and the end index is 4 end index this is the end index this is not looking very like okay uh, uh, let me let me raise it off to make it more clear it is messing up okay so this was the array let me quickly create it again that was looking over occupied that's why i switched the pages okay so you have to take a variable in i you have to use a for keyword you have to use curly this open this round parenthesis i already told you who lives who lives inside this who lives here initialization this is a house na three part of the house if you remember from the previous videos who lives here condition 
and who lives in the third part unary operators i plus plus i minus minus unary operators right okay fine okay fine so writing a for loop from where you start this i you will start this i from the starting index your starting index is 0 your starting index is 0 you will start your i from this 0 right you will start your i from this 0 semicolon where you will traverse up to where you will go you will go to this fourth index because you have to traverse on these many elements now so last element is having index number 4 so you will write a 4 i less than equal to 4 okay the end index then how many jumps you will take just one because from this element to this element then this element then this element then this element these many jumps you will take okay these many jumps you will take okay that's why i plus plus open curly braces let me hide it up open curly braces then how do you print the element how do you print earlier when i asked you to print one to ten elements you did like this C out i because i is starting from 1 i is going to 10 that's why you printed like this C out of i but now you can see you cannot do like this C out i you cannot do like this this is wrong this way you are printing the indexes you are printing printing the indexes this way you are printing the indexes but we are not here to press uh, to print the index like we are not here to print the index but we are we are here to print the value at that index value at that index right so instead of doing like c out of i you have to do c out of how to access the element arr of i suppose the arr is the suppose arr is the name of this array so arr of i this is how you will print array elements okay this is how you will print the array elements i hope this syntax and code is clear to you let me again fast uh, quickly catch it up like let me again erase it off and let me again explain you this right okay so this is the array quickly quickly okay 10 20 30 40 50 this is the array and these are the indices on this array. This is index number 0. This is 1. This is 2. This is 3. This is 4. And this array is of size 5. Okay. Size was given. Suppose I have given you some variable in 10. Pre I have given you some variable in 10. That is 5. Okay. I have given you this variable already. Or you have calculated the size. By what formula? By the formula size of ARR. By size of ARR 0. I told you know this formula to calculate the size when size is not given. Okay. You may assume if size is given or you can calculate the size by yourself. No problem. That is not the big issue. Okay. Now, you will initialize a variable to traverse over this array as you do in for loop. Write the for keyword. Open this round parenthesis. Start this i. From where you will start this i? You will start it from 0th index because you have to cover from 0 to 4th index. Because the array elements are from 0 to 4th index. From where you will take this i? You will take this i to 4. Because 4 is the last index. As you can see, see my cursor. I am making a blue boundary. 4 is the last index. And i++. Why i++? Because you are printing this. Then moving forward one by one. Moving forward by one, moving forward by one, moving forward by one, right? That's why I plus plus. Then open this curly braces to write some instructions. What you will print? How you will print? C out, left shift, left shift, not I, not I, but you will not print this I, but what will you print? Tell me quickly, think in your mind. You will print A R R O F I E. Yes. You will do like this and some spaces to make it readable. Because you are, you are not printing the array index. You are printing the element at that index. And in order, to, in order to access element from an index, you have to write ARR of i. It means array value at that ith index. So you know like how it will work? 
you know you know like how it will work let me dry run it for you let me dry run then we'll move to the editor to code it up right okay how it will work firstly you are at zeroth index firstly let me uh, okay firstly you are at uh, let me use some other color okay firstly you are at some zeroth index okay you are at zero index you will check the condition if i less than equal to 4 yes zero is less than equal to 4 you will enter inside this for loop you will enter inside this for loop and you will print it up what you will print you will print arr of zero because your i is zero what is arr of zero it's 10 it's 10 because 10 is the element at zeroth index okay this is the way how you will be going about this right let me take a fresh page to show you the dry run it's dry run time it's dry run time dry run time okay dry run time 10 20 30 40 50 0 1 2 see the dry run very carefully i am i will be making sure that you will be knowing it very nicely afterwards right see the dry run carefully see the dry run this is for loop i starts from 0 i less than equal to 4 the last index i plus plus c out of c out of a r r of i this is the code na see dry, see the dry run carefully right okay let me take some bright color okay so firstly this was the first step this is the second step this is the third step this is the fourth step from day one i am explaining this right okay so firstly i is at 0 check if i less than equal to 4 yes 0 is less than equal to 4 enter this for loop print arr of i what is this i this is 0 so what will you print arr of 0 what is this arr of 0 it's 10 it's 10 this got printed this will get printed this will get printed right now this step move i plus plus it means you will move to index number 1 you have come here this i has become 1 this i has become 1 now let me use some other color this i has become 1 now check if 1 less than equal to 4 yes again move inside this for loop access this element arr of 1 what is this this is 20 this is 20 print it up print it up again increment i what it will become it will become 2 again check again check it will become 2 again check if 2 less than equal to 4 yes again move inside this for loop again do arr of 2 what is arr of 2 30 again print this element 30 right again increment it what your i will become your i will become 3 not 4 actually your i will become 3 okay your i will become 3 again check if 3 less than equal to 4 yes in enter this loop print this arr of i what is your arr of i it's arr of 3 what is the element at third index see my cursor it's 40 print it print it okay again do i plus plus your i will become 4 i will become 4 check if 4 less than equal to 4 yes it is true yes it is true although 4 is not less than but it is equal to one condition is true enter this for loop print this error of i what is this error of i it's error of 4 what is the element at fourth index index it's 50 print this 50 again do i plus plus your i will become 5 your i will become 5 check if 5 less than equal to 4 check if 5 less than equal to 4 no it's not break out of the loop break out of the loop break out of the loop of the loop okay so you have break uh, you have uh, come out of the loop you came out of the loop right so this is the output this is the output 10 20 30 40 50 this is how you have printed it this is how you have printed it let's move to the editor to code it up let's move to the editor okay create an array how to create an array i already told you data type some array name give a size 5 give five elements 1 2 3 4 5 this array will be already given to you in the questions right but here we are practicing that's why we are making our own array right okay initialize it with some variable to traverse with i 
write a four keyword open this see i am speaking and i am writing something on the editor okay open this round parenthesis start this i from where from the starting index that is zero take this i up to where to take this i four because it is a last index but we cannot hard code it so we have to do uh, okay suppose this uh, suppose this uh, size is given in n variable this is size this is five okay let us not write it here because i have to use it here i less than equal to from where i'll take this i from up to where i will take this i n minus one because size is five but the index are four that's why n minus one you know not like why i removed this i from here like i i wrote five initially here but i erased it off and stored it in some variable the size because i have to use this here okay you cannot hard code it because you never know like what size of the array will be there so never hard code it just write n okay if it is given or calculate the size n minus 1 this n minus 1 is 4 only no worries okay earlier also we are taking from 0 to fourth index now this is 4 only size is n n is 5 5 minus 1 is 4 i plus plus because you are jumping one by one right okay see out see out what you will write arr of i we dry run it now we have already dry run it we have already done the dry run right okay so let me um let me run this code and see like what output we will get let me run this off let me run this code to see like what output we will get who oh, it's taking time no worries who oh, see the output it is giving us 1 2 3 4 5 it means this these are the array elements see these are the array elements right these are the array elements so this is the first question which you have successfully which we all have successfully done so let us proceed further let us proceed further for the second question let us proceed further for the second question let me raise it off let me raise it off okay question 2 is question 2 is let me raise it off some all the elements of the array some all the elements of the array of the array okay some all the elements of the array how will you achieve this question how will you do this let us let us move to the open board let us move to the open board okay okay let us move to the open board now you have done something very similar to this you have done something very similar to this question where i ask you to sum the elements from 1 to 5 i already showed you through dry run now when i was explaining you for loop i already showed you this thing that how to sum the elements from 1 to 5 but now it is little bit there is a subtle change there is a subtle change little bit change let little bit change is there you are not like for now you you don't have to calculate the sum of this 1 to 5 elements but you have to calculate the sum of array elements how it is changed this question is changed in such a way that you have to calculate the sum of array elements the sum of array elements yes this is a subtle or the very little change you have to do i have done it in this question right so how will you achieve this question let me highlight it how will you achieve this question how will you sum the array elements anybody any idea think in your minds think in your minds okay just a small change to this previous approach that we have already done right suppose i have given you suppose i have given you array as 1 2 3 4 5 suppose i have oh again i uh, like now you will be thinking that uh, again and again i am taking the same very simple array elements so let us take some random array elements right so suppose this is 1 this is 7 this is 2 this is 9 this is 5 this this is the array okay This is the array with these indices: index one, index two, index three, index four. Okay, five elements with zero to four indexes, right? Index one less than the actual array number, element number, right? Okay. How will you achieve this sum? Earlier, when I asked you to calculate the sum of one to five, what you did? What you did? Tell me quickly. You initialized the sum variable with zero. 
what is the need for initialization so that a garbage value is not getting stored because if you are writing something like this na a garbage value is stored in this a block because you have not initialized it with anything so to avoid the garbage value you have initialized it with zero why only zero why not with one why not with two why not with three why with zero only because this zero should not impact your actual answer this arrow this uh, zero sorry this zero shouldn't affect affect your actual answer your actual answer let us say after calculating the sum you got something as 21 let us say for random and already you have given sum as value 1 suppose you have initialized this suppose you have not initialized with zero you have initialized it, uh, this sum with 2 now your actual answer is 21 but you have to add a 2 because you have initialized this sum with 2 your answer will become 3 which is wrong okay which is wrong but if you add a 0 to 21 this will be 21 only it means your actual answer is still maintained your actual answer is still maintained your answer is still maintained okay okay so this is the explanation part uh, little explanation part so what you will do what is the first step that i told you when we were calculating the one to five element sum tell me quickly we have taken some variable sum we have initialized it with zero i hope you are clear why with zero or why to initialize then we have taken some variable to traverse that is i let us say we used a four keyword we use this i we initialize it from one because we have to we calculated the sum from one to five we have taken this i to five we did an i plus plus curly braces sum sum plus equal to i sum plus equals to i this is what we have did we have done this is what we did earlier right this is what we did earlier and i also showed you the, you the dry run okay i also showed you the dry run of this okay watch the previous videos right okay but now our motive is not to calculate the sum of one two five our motive is to calculate the sum of array elements array elements sum of array elements we have to calculate what we have to do sum of array elements we have to calculate and not the sum of one two five how we will achieve this the code is very similar the code is very similar believe me you know like what changes you will make to code this is as it is this is also as it is this change you will make see from where the index is starting it is starting from zero so instead of this one instead of this one let me raise it off let me raise it off so instead of this one you will start you will start it from zero because the index is starting from zero you will the next change is that you will not go up to five because the array elements array index is the end index is four so you will not go to five you will go to four let me raise it off let me raise this five and you will go to four this is a subtle change i am making in this code rest the code is same i plus plus is same now you earlier are adding i but here the i is changed to indexes if you add this i na you are not adding this array elements one plus seven you are not doing like this one plus seven plus two plus nine plus five if you are doing like this what you are adding you are adding the indexes was zero plus one plus two plus three plus four you are doing like this but you have we have to do something like this we have to add array elements and note the indexes so instead of this i let me raise it off instead of this i instead of this i what you have to do what you have to do arr of i again and again i am telling the same thing arr of i this way you are not adding indexes but you are adding the actual value at that that index you will be adding 1 plus 7 plus 2 plus 9 plus 5 okay this is small change this change where we have changed we have changed this starting value this ending value and this this is a subtle change and you will be calculating the sum of this array elements okay some of this array elements should i show you the dry run of this 
Okay, let's proceed. Let's move to the dry run. Let's move to the dry run. Okay, what were the array elements? One seven three nine five or two nine five. Okay, this was the array where n the size was five. Okay, size was five. What were the indexes? Zero, one, two, three, four. These were the indexes. Okay. How to write a for loop? How to write the code? Initialize the sum with zero because you have to calculate the sum. Then with the variable, okay, to traverse in the array. Write f or keyword. Open the round parenthesis. Initialize it from the starting index that is zero. Take it to the end index. What is the end index? Four. Increment it one by one. Okay, increment it one by one. Open the curly parenthesis. Sum plus equals to a r r o five. I hope this syntax is very much clear to you. Let us dry run this code. Let us dry run this code. Firstly, the index is zero. Check, check. Let me. Okay, let me write the check conditions for here. Okay, otherwise the screen will become mess up. Will be messed up. Check. Firstly, i is zero. Check. If zero less than equal to four, yes. Move inside this for loop. Do like this. Sum is zero. Sum is zero. Do like this. Sum equals to. What do you mean by this plus equals to it? Sum is equal to sum plus a r r o five. Sum plus a r r o five. Then sum equals to. What is the sum? What is the initial value of sum? Zero. Zero plus what is this a r r o five a r r of zero, i is zero na that means a r r of zero what is this this is one add a one what it will become zero plus one what it will become it will become a one okay it will become one it means sum is not zero now it has become one okay again increment it i will become one check. Check. I will become one. Okay. Don't change the sum here. Actually, this will look bad. Okay. Don't change it here. Let us not change it here. Let us change it here. Here. Sum will see. I am crossing it up. Sum will become one. Right. Now the index is one. Check if one less than equal to four. Yes, one is less than equal to four. Move inside this loop. Do this statement. Perform this operation again and again. See the cursor where I am drawing red boundary. Sum equals to sum is not one now. Sum is has become one. One plus a r r of i. What is i? I is one. One plus a r r of one. What is this one? This one is this one is seven. This one is seven. It will become eight. Okay. Let me raise it off. Okay, now the sum has become eight. Sum has become eight. Okay, you have added first two elements. Do an i plus plus. Your i will become three. What your i will become? I will become sorry two. I will become two. Perform this operation. Sum equals to sum plus i. Sum is is equal to sum plus a r r o five. What is your sum? What is the value of the sum? Eight. What is this plus? What is this a r r o five? A r r o two. It's three. Add it up. Sum will become sum will become eleven. Okay. Let me raise it off again. It will become eleven. It will become eleven. Now your sum has become eleven, and your i is four. I is three. Sorry, i is three. Okay. After incrementing, after performing this step, i is three. Now i is three. Sum is eleven. Again, enter this for loop. Again, enter this for loop. Perform this operation. Perform this operation. Sum equals to sum plus a r r o five. Sum is equal to sum plus a r r o five. What is your sum? Your sum is eleven plus a r r o five. What is the this value? A r r o i. I is three. It means a r r o three. What is the value of this a r r o three? It's nine. See above arrow. See above array. It's nine. So what is eleven plus nine? It's twenty. It's twenty. 
okay again increment this i i has become 4 sum is 20 again perform this operation again perform this operation again perform this operation this line number 1 this line number 1 again perform sum equals to sum plus arr of i sum is equal to what is the value of sum now 20 plus arr of i what is arr of i it's arr of 4 because i is 4 now what is arr of 4 it's 5 it means 20 plus 5 it is 25 now your i will become 5 and you will check if i less than equal to 4 5 is not less than equal to 4 it is not less than equal to 4 it means you will break out of the loop break out of the loop break out of the loop what is the final value of your sum? It's 25. Let me highlight it. Final value of your sum is 25. It's 25. Okay, it's 25. This is the final value of your sum. And after coming out of this for loop, this is for loop, no? this is for loop, this is the curly braces. After coming out of this for loop, print C out of error of I. Sorry, C out of sum. Print this sum value. Print this sum value because you have calculated the value of this sum. Okay. You have calculated the value of this sum. Then print it. Your answer will be 25. Fine. I hope you are clear with the dry run. I hope you are clear with the dry run. Let me, let me, for one minute, let me quickly make you aware of the dry run again. Okay. Okay. 0. I less than equal to 4. I plus plus, right? Okay, sum equals to, don't write plus equals to, otherwise you will get confused. Write like this, this is okay, right? What was the array? 17925 or 35, whatever it is, right? Okay, so what is the first step? What is the first step? This is the first step. Yeah, of course, you will declare some i. Don't. This is a, a thing that you can write by yourself by now, right? This is the first step. Then check the condition. If the condition is true, move inside this for loop. Do this operation. Sum equals to, what is the initial value of sum you have taken? 0 plus ARR of i. What is i? This i is 0. So, ARR of 0. What is 0? This is 1. It will become 1. Sum will become 1 now, right? Sum will become now 1. Then, increment this i. It will become 1. Then again check if 1 less than equal to 4. Again move inside this loop. Again perform this operation. Again increment. Do this, do this like until you are not uh, breaking out of the loop, right? This is a simple procedure. This is a simple procedure, right? If I'll ask you, if I'll ask you, can you, if I'll ask you, can you calculate the product also? Product of array elements? Can you calculate the product of array elements? Suppose this is the array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Can you calculate the product of array elements? Yes. Instead of taking sum is equal to 0, take something like this. This is the product. This variable will store the answer. What do you like with what value you will initialize it? 0. Is it okay? No. Because suppose if you have achieved some 35 as a your product, 35 as your product, and if you will multiply it with 0, then it will become 0. Entire array product will become 0. So, this is the universally accepted thing. Okay, these are the small ticks and tactics in coding that whenever you have to calculate the sum of elements, initialize it with 0. Whenever you are calculating the product, initialize it with 1 because 1 will not affect your answer. 35 into 1 is 35 only. This is not affecting your answer. That's why, okay? Take the product always at this. How will you change this code? Let me take you to the previous page. <clears throat> In this, what is the change you, what are the changes that you will make while calculating product? Very simple change. Remove this sum, remove this sum and write prod product write product because you are calculating product product equals to product any other changes any other changes change this plus sign to the multiply or the asterisk this sign right so remove this sign remove this sign and 
convert it into the multiply. This is the simple logic for calculating the product of array elements. Product of array elements, right? Product of array elements. This is the simple thing. This is a simple thing for calculating the product of array elements, right? This is the code. So let us move to the editor to code both questions, calculating the product of array elements and sum. Okay. Suppose I am giving you a size three array in 10 is equal to three and let us create an array this is also a right technique to create an array when you are not giving some here in the square braces right let us take it one two three only very simple keep it simple okay okay for keyword okay firstly you have to initialize it with some variable to traverse for keyword round braces from where you will start this i? You will start it from 0 because the starting index is 0. From where you will take, like uh, up to where you will take this? You will take it to less than equal to n minus 1. Because the size is 3 but the indices are 2, right? Index is 1 less than the size, right? i plus plus because you are moving 1 by 1. Sum is equal to sum plus, sum is equal to sum plus arr of i right arr of i int sum equals to zero so you have to keep a sum variable also i told you now while explaining in the editor let us run this code let us run this code let us see what answer oh we will not get any answer because we have not printed this silly mistake yeah see out sum let us see the answer Ooh, it is giving us 6. It is giving us 6, right? And how will you calculate the product? Initialize a product variable to store the product with 1. Because not with 0. Otherwise, every whole answer will become 0. Replace this product. Replace this sum, uh, sum variable with product, right? Because you are calculating the product now. Replace this plus sign with the multiply because you are not calculating the sum but you are calculating the product. See out product. What do you, what what will be the product of 1 into 2 into 3? It will be 6. Let us check if it is giving the 6 answer or not. Who? It is giving the 6 answer, right? It is giving the 6 answer. The dry run is same as the addition that's, that we have uh, done, that we did in addition. Nah? The dry run is same. Just This is the homework for you. This is the homework for you. Let me give some homework. Homework for you is, let me take it back. Homework is dry run, dry run the loop, dry run the loop of calculating product of array. Calculating product of array. This is the homework. You have to yourself dry run this loop where you are cal calculating the product of array elements, right? Array elements. This is your homework. This is your homework. Okay. So this is your homework. Yes. Okay. So let's move to the question number four. Let's move to the question number four. Let me raise it off. Let me raise it off. Question four. Question four. Question four, right? So what is your fourth question? The fourth question is count. Count. Odd elements inside an array. Count odd elements in an array. How do you do that? How will you do that? Count odd elements in an array. Okay, so I'll give you some array and you have to count the odd number of elements. Like, like how many odd elements are there in the array? Okay, let us move to the whiteboard for understanding it and then we will code it up. Okay, fine. Okay, so let us take some array. Suppose I am giving you some array. Suppose I am giving you some array as 1, 2, 17, 81. Okay, let us take small array. Otherwise, the dry run will be very large. Right? Okay. 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 So, this is the array, right? This is the array with some indexes. 0 index, 1 index, 2 index, 3 index. This is a simple array that I have given to you, that I have given to you. 
ओके ओके दिस इज अ सिंपल एरे सो यू हैव टू कैलक्युलेट नंबर ऑफ ओड एलिमेंट्स हाउ मेनी ओड एलिमेंट्स आर देयर यू हैव टू कैलक्युलेट दोज ओड एलिमेंट्स हाउ विल यू डू दैट हाउ विल यू डू दैट हाउ विल यू कैलक्युलेट द ओड एलिमेंट्स ऑफ कोर्स फॉर कैलकुलेटिंग यू हैव टू लूप इन लूप ओवर लूप ओवर दिस एरे राइट यू हैव टू लूप यू हैव टू ट्रेवर्स सॉरी नॉट लूप या लूप इज ऑल्सो नॉट wrong word for this so you have to traverse in this array traverse in this array to calculate the number of odd elements traverse in this array you know not like how to traverse where you know very well by now how to traverse so i already told you when you have to count something this is the small trick and tactic you ha you have to take a count variable with you and initialize it with zero okay like uh, uh how do i give you an example okay so these are these are the small tricks and tactics that you have to keep in mind while coding okay you have to initialize a count variable with zero why suppose you are you are a person suppose you are here this is a table i am playing a game with you i am saying these are the these are the uh flowers these are the flowers flowers okay sorry if my drawing is not good okay flower these are the flowers right focus on the logic right these are the flowers i came to you i came to you and asked you i asked you to calculate calculate the flowers on the table the number of flowers on the table flowers on the table okay so initially your count will be zero because you have not started ca calculating counting okay this is your finger you will point a finger here and say oh i counted one in in this uh, ha, uh, uh, in the other hand you will make a count okay one one flower then you will shift your eyes to this second flower and say two flowers then three flowers then you will shift your eyes to here uh, the fourth flower you will say fourth flower okay sixth uh, fifth flower sixth flower seventh flower okay so you will rotate your eyes on the table like you will uh, take your eyes uh uh you will like uh, start counting okay you will start counting the flowers on the table this is a table right this is a table you will start counting the flowers but your initial count is zero because you have not when you have not started calculating the flowers on the table then your count was zero initially your count was zero so same way this initial count was zero right so let me raise this this story let me raise this and then proceed further to the question right okay okay fine fine so you have maintained a count variable you will initialize a variable because you have to traverse for traversing purposes traversal purposes you will write a for keyword you will open round braces from where you will start this from the zeroth index from where you will up to where you will take it to the third index why because the index is the last index is third three you will jump one by one on every element like you will go one by one from one element to the other element that's why right okay now you have to write some condition here because you are checking for the odd elements what is the condition for checking if an element is odd or not let me write it with some other color what is the condition to check if this element is odd or not if how to access element at the zero zeroth index arr of i it means element at is zero it, it means element at index i it means element at index zero that is one that is one that is one in the array if it is divis okay if it is divisible by this two or not okay if this is divisible by this two or not if it is divisible then do nothing do nothing comment out and write do nothing don't do anything okay else else means it is not divisible by two then you do a count plus plus count plus plus okay you do a count plus plus if it is odd do nothing comment out and uh, or leave this uh, leave this uh, curly braces empty don't do don't write anything 
else write up do a count plus plus or this is very tricky this is very messing up let me make it very simple for you don't even you don't even have to write this uh, this uh, else part do a simply write an if part right simply write if condition if array of i modulo 2 not equal to 0 this is the condition to check out na then do a count plus plus okay don't write else part it is not required here right this is the entire code to count the number of elements let us dry run this let us dry run this okay let us dry run this so you are at zeroth index you are checking if zero is less than equal to 3 zero is less than equal to 3 yes it is true move inside this for loop okay move inside this for loop check if arr of i what is arr of i it is arr of 0 what is arr of 0 it's 1 Check if one divided by two, one modulo two is zero or not. No, it's not zero. It will be one. So it is not zero. It means it is an odd number. Then count plus plus. Increment this count by one. Okay. Then increment this index. You will come to first index. Check if one less than equal to three. Yes. Again, move inside this if condition. This for loop. Check if arr of i. What is arr of i? It's arr of one. If arr of one modulo two not equal to zero, what is arr of one? It's two. Two modulo but two modulo two is equal to zero. It means it is not odd. So skip this part. Don't enter inside this if condition. Increment the uh, index without doing anything, without doing count plus plus because it is even, right? Okay, then. Your index will become two. Check if two less than equal to three. Yes. Move inside this for loop. What is the element at index three? Index two. It's seventeen. Check if seventeen modulo two not equal to zero. Yes, it is not equal to zero. It will leave some remainder that is one. It means it is an odd element. Move inside this curly braces. Do a count plus plus. Count will become two. Okay. Count will become two. Again, increment this i. It will become three. Check if arr of three that is eighty one modulo two not equal to zero. Yes, it is also not equal to zero. Is it is also not equal to zero? It means move inside this curly braces. You will again do a count plus plus. It will become three. Okay. Now you will come at index number four, but index number four does not exist. It means you have traversed on every array element. There are no further elements. That's why break out of the loop. What is the final value of this count? Let me highlight this up. What is the final value of this count? It's three. So the answer will be three. And it is true because in this entire array there are three elements that are odd. That is one, comma seventeen, comma eighty one. So the answer is correct. The answer is correct, right? I hope you are clear with this dry run. I hope you are clear with this dry run. I am hoping that this dry run is very much clear to you. right okay so let us move to the editor to code it up let us take the same array right int count for counting the array elements which are odd int i variable to traverse in the loop using uh, variable to traverse in the array i starts from 0 let us first make the array size of array is 3 okay size of array is 4 i think yeah 4 Int arr uh, round uh, square braces then curly braces. What were the array elements we took? Seventeen and eighty one, right? These were the array elements, right? Okay, these were the array elements. From up to where you will take this i less than equal to n minus one because the n is four, but you have your indexes are up to three only. That's why n minus one i plus plus. Write the condition if arr of i modulo 2 not equal to 0 it means it is odd then do a count plus plus increment the count after performing the operations print this count variable let us see what will be the answer according to me it should be 3 woo it is giving us 3 yeah see it is giving us 3 it is giving us 3 right it it is giving us 3 fine fine cool okay Let us move to this open board again. 
so this was the formula to calculate the number of odd elements if i ask you okay if i ask you if i ask you to calculate note don't calculate those odd elements see i am erasing this odd calculate number of even elements even elements what is the subtle what is a small little change that you will make to this logic to this logic instead of writing not equal to 0 this not equal to 0 you will just write equal to equal to 0 because even elements are those where it is equal to equal to not uh, but not not equal to right it is equal to equal to so instead of this not equal to 0 i wrote equal to equal to 0 right this is the subtle change i have made let us move to the editor to uh, to do this subtle change okay let us move to the editor okay so remove this not equal to sign and use a equal to equal to right use a equal to equal to let us run this code and see what is the answer i think one is the answer because there is just one element yes yes our answer and expectations are correct because there is just one even element yes, this two this two this is the just one even element right that's why the answer is one okay okay fine 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 okay so so let us move to the question number 6 because i have make uh, like i have explained you two questions in one two in one odd and even elements together right simultaneously so this is a sixth question what is the sixth question what is the sixth question quickly tell me quickly think what it can be okay so it is it is find find the array element element which is completely divisible divisible by 3 which is completely divisible by 3 okay which is completely divisible by 3 find the array element which is completely divisible by 3 let us let me take you to the uh, open board okay so the question is suppose i am give i am giving you some array this is the array that i am giving to you this is 15 this is uh, 20 this is 19 this is the array that i am giving to you and i am asking you find that first number find this first number first number first number that is that is divisible by 3 that is divisible by 3 first number to find that is divisible by 3 find that first number which is divisible by 3 okay so what you have to do you have to find that first number which is divisible by 3 just one number you have to find if there suppose there are multiple suppose there are multiple suppose there are multiple suppose there are multiple numbers that is 21 also okay now there are two numbers which are divisible by 3 one is this one is this but i am asking you the first number to give me that is divisible by 3 it means you will print this 15 and not this 21 this is the first part of the question in second part we will print all those elements that are divisible by 3 right okay okay so how will you proceed how will you proceed you will make some variable i to traverse in the for loop to traverse in the array write a for keyword from where you will start the index starts from 0 0 where it will go what are the indexes 1 2 0 1 2 3 4 5 yeah you will go up to 5 because the array last array index is 5 i plus plus what is the logic you will say if arr of i modulo 3 equal to equal to 0 print that element see out arr of i see out arr of i means if this arr of i is divisible by 3 then print it and break and break i told you no i explained you about the break condition i explained you about the break condition so what you will do what you will do you will write a break break statement because you have to just find the first element that is divisible by 3 that's why if you found that 3 that element that is divisible by 3 you will break out of the loop you will not move further let us see the dry run you are at zeroth index you are at zeroth index 0 is less than equal to 5 move inside check 
if this one is divisible by three it's not then do i plus plus you will come to this seven check if seven modulo three equal to equal to zero it is not again don't move inside this if condition do an increment of index you will come to second index check if second index value that is 15 if 15 modulo 3 equal to equal to 0 yes yes print this 15 it means print this error of i print this error of 2 that is 15 and break out of the loop you will break out of the loop it means you have breaked here you have uh, you have come out of loop at this point, you will not proceed further for these three elements that are left. That are left, right? You have come. Uh, you have come out of the loop uh, 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 by traversing up to fifteen, right? Because you have found the first element that is divisible by three. Okay, <clears throat> this is the code. Now, if I ask you, if I ask you, if I I'm uh, like I'm making you do questions uh, do questions and think about questions in pairs which are similar to each other right okay which are similar to each other these are the basic questions of arrays that will make you good at array concepts for higher and advanced questions right okay these are the basic questions that will make your foundation strong or base strong in the concepts of array problem solving right okay now i am asking you that uh, this in this question you have printed the first element in this question you have printed this first element that is divisible by three that is divisible by three right but now i am saying that don't print just one element print all elements all elements print all elements that are divisible by three okay print all elements that are divisible by three divisible by three divisible by three what you will do just one change just one change and your question will be this only <clears throat> what one one what one change will you will do remove this break statement remove delete delete this break statement let me erase it off and your question will become like this you know like how it is working now it will not break at this point it will not be breaking uh, you out of the loop at this point right what the what just the element here it's i think it's 20 right <clears throat> it's 20 yeah now you will not be breaking here at this point at this point you will not be breaking not be breaking right you will not be breaking at this point but you will continue traveling because you have not written a break statement now how this will work when you reach 15 it checked the condition it printed 15 and you were breaking out of the loop earlier but now you will not get out of the loop instead you will go to this index number 3 and check if this 20 is divisible by 10 uh, this 3 no then again increment the index you will come to this fourth index check if 19 is divisible by 3 no increment the index check is if this 21 is divisible by 3 yes print this 21 also you, earlier you printed uh, 15 let's say and then now you will print 21 then you will move out of the loop because the array has ended right so earlier you were getting 15 when you have uh, written a break statement because the moment the heat of the moment it found uh, that 15 is divisible by 3 it break out of the loop break out you are breaking out of the loop but now you're not breaking out of the loop because you have not written a break statement and you are proceeding further to find more elements that are divisible by 3. More elements that are divisible by 3. Right? Right? Okay. I hope this question is also covered. So how will you write that? How will you write that? Let us code it up. Let us move to the editor and code it up. Suppose I am giving you some array with size... Uh, okay, with size 4. Suppose I am giving you some array with size 4. Right? With size 4. Okay. Let us create that array. Let us create that array. What are the array elements? 1, 2, 15, 20, 20, 19, 21. Right? Okay. Let us take some variable to traverse in the array. Let us write a for loop. I starts from, okay. I starts from 0. I is going up to which index? 1. How many elements are there? These are not 4 elements. How many elements are there? Six elements, yes, six elements. So where you will go? N minus one. It means five index you will cover, right? 
if if a r r of i modulo 3 equal to equal to 0 then what you will do then you will print the element and break out of the loop break out of the loop let us see what you will get let us see what you will get see see you are just getting a 15 you are just getting a 15 you are just getting a 15 right so you are just getting a 15 but if I am not writing this break, let me erase it off. Let me not erase it off. Uh, let me show you the difference by commenting it out. Let me comment it out to show you the difference. Now I have commented this, commented out this break. It means it is not impacting the code. It is ignored. Let us see what will be the answer. Cool. You, are, you can see like there is 1521. So I think uh, to make it more readable, let me add a space here. Now you will see, you will get 15 and 21 because the break statement is omitted. See, you are getting 15 and 21. It means you are getting all those elements that are divisible by 3. If I am adding more divisible by 3 elements like 24, 27, it will print everyone. It will print everybody. Every element. You are getting, okay. What just happened? What just happened? Okay, the, okay, the, the answer is still 1521 because the size is not increased. Let us increase the size because we have added three more elements now. Two more ele elements. That's why the size has become eight. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, the size has become eight. Let us check. Oh, it is giving us 15, 21, 24, 27. You know like what happened? You know like what happened even after I added 24 and 27 still the array elements answer is 15, 20, 15 and 21. You know like what happened? Let us move to the editor to show. Like let me show you like why it happened. Why it happened. The things which happened. <clears throat> so what are the array elements? 1, 2, 15, 20. 1, 2, 15, 20, 21, 24, 20, uh, 27. I think these are the... These are the eight array elements. I have to take it. Okay. I want to show you something. The mistake that happened. I want to clarify it. 21, 24, 27. Okay. So these are the eight elements. But I have given you int n that is size is equal to 6. So the loop went from 0th index to 5th index. 0th index to 5th index the loop went. That's why it printed answer 15 and 21. 24 and 27 are also divisible by 3. But still it printed 15 and 21. Because you are not considering these elements. Because your loop is going from 0 to 5 index. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you are looping over the elements from 0 to 5. That's why these 24 and 27 are not considered. Okay. In order to make them consider to be printed as uh, here as a divisible a divisor of 3, you have to increase this 6 size to 8 because you have to consider this 6 and 7. If your size is 6 and you are writing like this, no error of 6, it will give error. It will say that 6 index does not occur. It does not occur. It does not occur. 7th is also not occurring. Okay, so you have to increase the size also, right? So this was the blunder that happened. Uh, in some two to three minutes back okay so i hope this thing is clear to you i hope this thing is clear to you right i hope this thing is clear to you so this is the last question of the day this is the last question of the day okay this is the we will do so many questions don't worry 40 to 50 basic to intermediate questions we will cover and then high level question don't worry okay so this is the last question for today today this is the last question for today so this question is sort the array sort the array okay you know like what do you mean by sorting what do i mean by sorting like have you heard this term ever sorting sort it means it can happen in two ways increasingly sorting decreasingly sorted we will do in, uh, increasingly for now and decreasingly in the upcoming sessions right okay so what is the question sorting the array the question is 
sorting the array elements this is very simple question very small and simple question S simple and sober question sorting the array elements okay sorting the array elements right so this is a one liner code this is inbuilt function that you have to use every time okay it is okay to use inbuilt okay one liner code how will you do that you will write suppose i am giving you some array something like this you know like what do you mean what what do i mean by sorting suppose these are the array elements 1 3 8 6 7 2 after sorting you know like what 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 kind of array it will become it will become like this it will become something like this 1 2 3 6 7 8 this is it is increasingly sorted you know like what do you mean by what do i mean by sorting the smaller element is first then the next smaller then the third smaller fourth smaller fifth smaller sixth smaller this is sorting right so what is the code for sorting the array what is the code for sorting the array this is a one liner code code this is the inbuilt function that we will be using which is provided by the rich library of who provide this okay first let us discuss what is the code and then we will discuss further things so suppose this is an array whose name is arr and there are some elements some elements some sort of elements you will write sort sort suppose this array has some size n open the braces write like this arr arr plus n this is the inbuilt function to sort the array this is the inbuilt function of sorting the array write the sort keyword let me highlight it write the sort keyword array name and then comma and then array name plus size it means starting from first element to the last element okay okay i already told you now there is a very rich library bits std in the first lecture i told you bits std c plus plus dot h this is a very rich library which has infinite number of inbuilt functions to help you to help the programmers right so this sort function is provided by this library bits std and i already told you one thing if you are not including this library then every time you have to include separate libraries for using separate functions what is a separate library for this other than this universal library when you write io stream you have to include some libraries for using the fun function that you are using right if you are using sort you have to include some library something like that algorithm.h hash include algorithm.h this is the library that provide you this sort inbuilt function okay if you're not writing this then you will not be able to use it and if you're not able to you don't want to write 100 libraries for 100 inbuilt function then there is a universal library bits std but apart from this universal library you should also know like what is a separate library for this sort that's why i told you algorithm.h so uh, your homework is to search on google if this dot h is there or not i think it is here algorithm.h right okay for power function for power function to calculate power you are having math.h for mathematical operations for algorithms you are using so okay this is a this was the last question let me code it up let me code it up for you let me code it code this up for you right okay so size is 3 in arr take the three elements otherwise it will give error that you have taken more than the capacity oh it is already sorted let me take unsorted one yeah this is fine this is fine this is fine okay what just happened okay sort 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 arr comma arr plus n now like tell me from this uh 1 to 30 line piece of code do i need to uh, include that algorithm dot h no because i have used the universal header file library okay rich library right now how will you know that uh, whether the array is sorted or not you will print now before and after let us print it before before sorting let us print it up let us print it up before sorting and let me also write here 
बिफोर सोटिंग सी आउट बिफोर सोटिंग बिफोर सोटिंग सो दैट यू कैन गेट द डिफरेंस बिटवीन लाइक वट इफ द एरे वॉज नॉट सोटेड एंड वट इफ द एरे सोटेड लेट मी कॉपी पेज दिस सेम कोड एंड पेज इट आफ्टर सोटिंग टू दिस इज आफ्टर सोटिंग लेट एस नो द डिफरेंस ओके लेट मी रन दिस कोड सी it is showing before sorting the array was 2453 after sorting it become it became or it becomes 235 45 it means the array is sorted successfully okay successfully sorted right so this was the last question for today's lecture i hope the basic questions that i have discussed there are four new set uh, a few more sets of basic questions two to three sets of basic questions that will that will make a very good grip over array problems right okay that will make a good grip over array problems that that those those are the foundation questions right these and those are the foundation questions right okay so i hope you are clear with this to with this today's lecture and i hope that you have understood a lot of problems your homework is to practice all these problems on your own understand it do the dry run of it and thank you so much for attending this lecture thank you Have a nice day. Bye bye.